Today I'd like to talk to you about the sugar. Sugar is one of the biggest toxic things for human beings and a lot of us don't believe it. A lot of us don't want to know about it because we are really addicted to sugar and a lot of our lives revolve around sugar and we don't really know that it's killing us. And most of our sugar craving is hardwired in our brains. Some people believe that it's more addicting than actually cocaine. And we know our children really respond to it instantaneously from birth. And even many animals really respond to sugar except cats. Cats don't respond to sugar. They don't have any taste buds for sugar. And even chickens, armadillos, whales, sea lions, some fish and some cowbirds do not respond to sugar. They don't have sugar uh, taste buds. Sugar does stimulate the release of some neurotransmitters, especially dopamine. So it does make us, make us very happy and gives us a sugar high. And uh, with this dopamine, we get habituated. So a lot of us would love to eat sugar and we get addicted to sugar and when sugar was given to rats uh, as sweetened water it actually showed that they preferred that to even cocaine even when they were addicted to cocaine from before and even more than heroin so we know how addictive the sugar is and that's why it's a very bad habit to break unless you are really determined to break that habit and you also know that people who are addicted to one thing is always uh, easy for them to get addicted to other things. So if you are willing to break the sugar habit, it's actually going to do a lot of good for you. You'll be able to get rid of a lot of other bad habits at the same time or immediately after that. And sugar was brought to England as uh, to the Europe. First it came to England in 18th century actually. And since then, people have begun to take more and more sugar. It started from about four pounds of sugar every year, and it quadrupled initially, and then again quadrupled in the 19th century. So 18th century quadrupled, and again quadrupled in 19th century. In the United States, we know that yearly sugar consumption has increased by 16 times over that same century in the 19th century from 1980s onwards the manufacturers products advertise uniquely healthy because they're low fat or low in saturated fat because there was a belief that saturated fat was the cause of heart disease later on I will explain how this belief came to be and how inaccurate that belief is most people did not want to believe that sugar is the cause of heart disease. Thanks to Dr. Ansel Keys, who did the seven country study and concluded that saturated fat causes heart disease. And later we found out that he was paid by the sugar industry and he was a promoter for sugar. And so he was kind of biased when he came to that conclusion. And sugar is present in many of our food. Sometimes we don't even know the sugar is in there unless we know how to read labels because they actually refer to sugar by 50 other names, especially the fructose sugar, especially the high fructose corn syrup sugar. And when you first taste sugar, we, it creates an astonishment, a kind of intoxication and creates a lifelong craving for that similar to many of the drugs which people abuse in Asia and Europe they did take honey prior to sugar and then the sugar displaced it and when the European colonists arrived in the new world and found no honey they actually introduced honeybees to the US this was before the sugar and the Native Americans used to call this honeybees the Englishman's fly. 
and this is where the sugar originated close to Australia in New Guinea about 10,000 years ago it was domesticated in New Guinea and after that they started refining it out of the sugar canes these are the sugar canes and today sugar cane can produce more calories per acre than any other kind of plant or animals so to get the maximum calories out of a certain amount of land sugar cane would be the best product now sugar cane was first brought to India from New Guinea and then from there the Buddhist missionaries took it to China and Japan then the Muslim explorers ex discovered it in China and took it back to Arabia via Persia and the doctor uh, from Persia it was the King Henry the second who discovered it and took it back to England even when people have hard times like a recession or depression they never give up sugar because they are addicted to it and they really can't live without it and uh, for example coca-cola after the world war established 64 bottling plants worldwide some using German and Japanese prisoners of war and they were instrumental in getting people addicted to more and more sugar similarly Kellogg's produced a first sugar coat version of his iconic cornflakes as frothed and flakies as you can see in this picture in 1952 and later on they released sugar snacks and their competitor was Post. Post came up with sugar crisp a year later. In 1953, General Mills released Sugar Smiles. That, that, that was a mixture of Wheaties and sugar frosted kicks. By 1956, they had released three more sugar coated cereals. So now we are getting our children addicted in their younger ages uh, to sugar by giving them these breakfast cereals. Over the next 20 years, cereal industry created dozens of other sugar coated cereals. Some of them had only half, the had almost half of their calories coming from sugar. And then uh, in the 20th century, in medical journals and newspapers, the doctors were found blaming sugar for a lot of illnesses. And they even thought diabetes was worsened or created by sugar and they also blamed rheumatism, gold stones, jaundice, liver disease, inflammation, gaseous indigestion, sleeplessness, tooth decay, ulcers and intestinal diseases to sugar, even neurological disorders and even cancer and you will find out from the new studies that these are all true and by 1920s People were dying from diabetes in higher and higher numbers in the United States and that became the main uh, talking point for doctors and so people were getting worried about diabetes and there was two kinds of diabetes type 1 and type 2 Type 1 was a deficiency of insulin, but type 2 is not a disease of insulin deficiency, but actually it's of insulin resistance. You have a lot of insulin, but insulin doesn't work properly. Usually, before you get type 2 diabetes, your blood circulation has a lot of insulin, and later on, your body stops responding to insulin. Eventually, you start getting high sugar. and this is what diabetes is. Uh, the blue symptoms are more likely in type 1 and the other symptoms are both kinds. Usually you, shape, you get uh, very thirsty, you, st you start getting very hungry sometimes, you can get weak and sometimes you can lose consciousness uh, as well and uh, you can get blurred vision in your eyes sometimes you might go to see the eye doctor he'll take a look at your eyes and say I can't see anything but that is usually caused by the high sugar in the breath you might get smell of acetone that usually happens with uh, diabetic ketoacidosis it's a 
in uh, it's a very serious condition which happens type 1 diabetics you might lose weight you might have uh, what you call kusmol or hungry kind of breathing we call it acidotic breathing hyperventilation then sometimes in the stomach you can get nausea vomiting stomach pain and you can be passing a lot of urine so you can have polyuria then diabetes is a dangerous disease as you know a lot of people die from it so people do die from diabetes due to a lot of complications which it can cause the complications can be macrovascular or microvascular macrovascular means uh, it happens in large blood vessels which can cause strokes in the brain and strokes can happen as a trans in ischemic attack which is we call a mini stroke and sometimes it can be a large stroke or cerebrovascular accident or you might just get dementia because of this atherosclerosis we call it vascular dementia in the heart you can get heart disease heart attacks and sometimes even heart failure we call it congestive heart failure in the extremities like in your legs especially you can get peripheral vascular disease due to the lack of blood supply because blood vessels are blocked it can cause ulcerations gangrene sometimes you might need amputations because of it in the eye you can get retinopathy cataracts glaucoma all these can be caused by sugar and in the kidney you can get nephropathy microalbuminuria uh, sometimes you get gross albuminuria that means a lot of protein in the urine or it can lead to kidney failure in the nerves you can get neuropathy peripheral neuropathy or autonomic neuropathy we call it peripheral means you get numbness and tingling pins and needles in the legs sometimes it, it looks like gloves and stocking we call it that you feel lack of sensation in an area covered by the glove or covered by the socks and so the sugar industry was getting hurt by this uh, propaganda it's not propaganda with the doctors talking about diabetes was not good for the sugar industry so they started fighting back and they started paying doctors especially two of them and Dr. Ansel Keys which I mentioned before from University of Minnesota and Dr. Fred Steyer, uh, who was the founder of the Department of Nutrition at Harvard, became their lifelong friends of this sugar industry. And they played a critical role in 1960s and 70s, defending the sugar as part of a healthy diet and arguing against the idea that it can cause chronic disease, especially diabetes. In 1939, Dr. Weston Price, a Cleveland dentist, and the Chair of American Dental Association's Research Committee published Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, a very famous book at that time. And he found out from his travels around the world that isolated populations such as Swiss mountain villages, pastoral populations in Central Africa, Inuits and First Nations people of North America and South Pacific Islands, which I have shown here in this picture, had nearly cavity-free teeth. They didn't have any cavities in their teeth and they usually retain all their teeth for life as long as they consume their traditional diets and avoided the sugar as well as white flour and in at that time in europe and uh, england and europe uh, as well as america united states people were getting a lot of dental disease and caries so Today we have a lot of controversy about sugar because of the issues between the uh, sugar industry promoting sugar and denying all the health defects, health the health effects of sugar. Um, and they thought sugar is not any worse than any other easily digestible carbohydrate rich foods, particularly white flour and starches. And today we know as sugar in any form is bad for your teeth as well as your health. In 1950s, people started dieting because they were all getting fat due to the consumption of sugar and other carbohydrates. They were getting very fat and the media started paying attention to low calorie food and they were blaming this obesity to fat in the diet and the diet industry or the food industry started producing stuff with less and less fat but they were adding more and more sugar. So it didn't really help people kept on becoming obese and kept on getting their chronic diseases thanks to the sugar. 
and even the cancer cancer was very, uh, not that common back in back in the days and now it's getting getting very common even young people are getting cancers and there was another study where they studied people from Yemen this is the Yemen which is a country next to Saudi Arabia today they're having a war with Saudi Arabia and some of the Yemenites who had been to Israel in 1930s got diabetes in high rates similar to the people in Israel but the Yemenites in Yemen did not have diabetes in high quantities like the people who migrated to Israel and we found that in a lot of other studies where people migrated to a new place and started eating the sugar rich diet and started getting high incidence of diabetes high blood pressure heart disease whereas in their native country they had very low in this incidence of these diseases and so there the doctors the doctor who did the study concluded that the sugar is probably the reason why these people were getting diabetes and other diseases and um, then another doctor Yad King tested sugar hypothesis in a series of experiments and he fed sugar to lab animals rats mice rabbits and pigs and they, he found that when he gave them sugar the triglycerides cholesterol and insulin levels all increased and you can find the same thing in humans when humans eat sugar rich diet or carbohydrate rich diet all these three things sugar triglycerides cholesterol insulin levels go high i know it personally when i stopped eating carbohydrates in the way of rice and other sugar my cholesterol dropped from 260 to 160 in one month and so uh, then the another thing people realized was French people had low rates of heart disease but they were still eating a uh, food high in saturated fat which at that time they were blaming for the heart disease but if you really look at it we call that French paradox at that time if you look at it you realize that French consume less sugar than the other populations and the other populations are fat and had heart disease all the French people ate more fat they did they were not fat because they didn't eat the sugar and so back in the days another doctor Dr. Walter Mertz uh, he was head of the carbohydrate nutrition lab in US Department of Agriculture and he testified in US Senate committee uh, together with his colleague Carol Burdenier and he, ex he explained that refined sugar plays havoc with health in lab, labs, lab rats it increased sugar, triglycerides and cause them to become diabetic and also these animals died at a very early age but we know uh, later on uh, a thing called saccharin came to be which was supposed to be a good sugar substitute it was cheap actually cheaper than sugar but the sugar industry paid for studies to prove that saccharin can cause tumors in rats when consumed in very large quantities because of that study although people actually take thousands of thousand times less dose of saccharin which could never cause any kind of health problems it was FDA had to uh, mention that uh, it's not safe for consumption in the year 2000 if they removed the requirement that sweet and low uh, had to carry the warning label but anyway today we know even this artificial sweetness cause can cause similar problems like sugar so we don't recommend that either And in mid 1980s, a lot of the academic and government researchers who suggested sugar can cause heart disease, diabetes, heart disease, and or diabetes. And while they were doing that, they were afraid that they would lose their credibility because sugar industries, public relations, were doing very well. 
and people were getting addicted to sugar and they would never stop sugar for any reason. And today we know sugar is the reason why people get metabolic syndrome which is the beginning of the diseases such as diabetes and blood pressure and heart disease and, I, uh, and the metabolic syndrome starts with these symptoms fatigue and inability to focus high blood pressure low HDL high triglycerides high fasting glucose then there's central obesity that means you are getting fat in the tummy like apple shaped obesity we call it you can get polycystic ovary syndrome in women especially girls we find this polycystic ovary disease in high numbers in Sri Lanka today and also erectile dysfunction in men but no they don't know the girls who have this disease were never told that it's caused by sugar but it is and you also get non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease this is becoming very common in obese people and also you get darkening of the skin around the neck and armpits sometimes even in the groin is all caused by the metabolic syndrome so the doctors are telling people that the first thing to look at for metabolic syndrome is the widening waistline I mean you're overweight and obese and you're getting a widening baseline, base, uh, waistline at that time almost as much as two-thirds of the American adults were becoming obese there's a good chance that you had metabolic syndrome and your blood pressure is probably a little high your probably glucose intolerant and on the way to become a diabetic and you're more likely to have a heart attack than a lean person and also you're more likely to have other, other diseases such as cancers and heart disease as we know today and this is how it progressed in the liver uh, into fatty liver initially you get insulin resistant a lot of adipose tissue lipogenesis and later leads to steatohepatitis with, with inflammation and your plasma glucose is probably high at this time and finally it can lead to even cirrhosis and uh, some of them going to liver failure today we know one in ten uh, adults have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is very common and it's estimated that there are 75 million adults today in the United States uh, have fatty liver even in infants we find it and in 1980s uh, the researchers were feeding animals with pure fructose or uh, sugar and then found that their livers converted much of the fructose into fat such in fat saturated fat called farmitic acid and today we know that this rise in LDL cholesterol was found in people who were getting heart, heart attacks later on and sometimes you get large babies it's called macrosomia and when the, when the mother has high blood sugar and the baby gets a lot of fee, uh, a lot of the same glucose and then the their pancreas produce a lot of insulin creating a large uh, deposition of fat and you get a big baby or a fat baby and so people realize especially uh, Dr. Burkitt and they realize that with the western uh, uh, they call them western diseases and the western diseases were obesity surrounded by heart disease, dementia, high blood pressure, cancer, infertility and diabetes and these are all caused by sugar and and a lot of times uh, people knew that people who had consumed a lot of sugar had bad teeth such as these especially in England because like I told you English people were the first westerners to bring sugar and so at that time they were richer than the Asian countries and they were consuming a large number of sugar and even later on we know that with sugar you get the production of uric acid which creates gout gout is as you can see here inflammation of the joints uh, in the feet causing a very painful condition 
and in 1960s hospital records in U Uganda and Kenya uh, found that gout was lower than one in a thousand in the native Af Africans but in 1970s uric acid levels were going up and incidence of both gout as well as hyperuricemia was skyrocketing uh, in 1980, a Harvard endocrinologist, who later became the dean of the Northwestern University School of Medicine, discovered that with, uh, there's another mechanism by which the insulin can create high blood pressure and also uh, uh, and this was by stimulating the central nervous system. So. And the white sugar, uh, sugar was actually called by people the white death. And people later on found out that it causes 13 different cancers. Some of the studies came very recently. That obese people have a very high incidence of cancers in 13 different places in the body. So these are the new studies I have. I mentioned some of these here and the next finding they found out next significant finding regarding or relating sugar was that sugar causes dementia today we call it second diabetes or we call it diabetes of the brain and the Alzheimer's disease we know roughly double every five years after you are 60 and at least in the modern western societies and now today in western countries the risk is increasing like cancer is associated with type 2 diabetes which people found out in mid 1990s if you already have diabetes, high blood pressure and coronary heart disease how can you best help yourself the best way is to get it cured you can cure high blood pressure diabetes or coronary artery disease and the best way to cure it with following the best diet you can take together with supplements of vitamins and antioxidants. The antioxidant vitamins help you to reverse the hormone problems and reverse the metabolic syndrome, even reverse diabetes or high blood pressure. So let us know if you need help. We are here to help you.